news headlines, entertainment, sports. It's the front page on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, Ricky Smiley Morning Show is 13, 13 minutes after the hour. Got your front page right here. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, RSMS family. Here's what's happening in news. The U.S. Supreme Court will take up a case on Tuesday that could impact how women get access to mufepristone, one of the two pills used in the most common type of abortion in the nation. The central dispute in the case is whether the Food and Drug Administration overlooked serious safety problems when it made mufepristone easier to obtain, including through mail-order pharmacies. OBGYN say a tiny fraction of patients suffer major or serious adverse events after taking mufepristone. In other news, the Affordable Connectivity Program has helped more than 23 million low-income U.S. households pay for Internet service. They could face higher bills or get kicked off their plans when it expires in April. The looming disaster could affect nearly one in five households nationwide, or about 60 million Americans if lawmakers don't act soon. Lastly, the money is still there, y'all. Now the uh, Powerball has risen to $1.1 billion. No lucky winner in Friday's drawing. So the next drawing is tomorrow night. Again, $1.1 billion jackpot up for grabs. That's $525.8 million in a cash payout. Lump sum. Uh, this two is more Powerballs up for grabs. Are they really? <laughs> awesome. I'm sure those are expensive. Uh, it's the eighth largest in U.S. lottery history. <laughs> Maria Moore, that's what's happening in news. For updates and more headlines, visit rickysmileymorningshow.com. Rock T, what you got in sports? Man, I saw you started the morning off, big dog. Uh, let's talk about this March Madness. Uh, I got a quick update. Let's start off with the men. Sweet 16 is set. My final four are still in the field. Yes, UConn, North Carolina, Houston, and Purdue still in that bad boy. But let's go ahead and get to the women because that's where all the action is. I'm going to tell y'all, man, go ahead and go, let's just give the championship to South Carolina right now. They're just going to give them the championship right now. They beat Presbyterian by 50. They beat North Carolina by 47. LSU punched their ticket to the Sweet 16. Duke upset Ohio State. They headed to the Sweet 16. Stanford and Ohio State, man, I don't know if you guys watched this last night. They had a dog fight going back and forth, went to overtime. Stanford was able to outlast them, so they advanced to the Sweet 16 as well. But uh, if y'all are not watching, women's college basketball tournament right now, something the matter with you. The best. Come on, man. Listen, it is what it is, man. Uh, we'll talk more about that later on in my next the sports best. report. Come men's on, Rick. basketball can't even mess with it. I'm it's, sorry. It ain't close. <laughs> it ain't close. Um, to women's ba- I mean, Rock, have we not been saying this uh, years before women's basketball got hot, how uh, we are fans of of, girl, of women's basketball? Absolutely, man. It's way I, more exciting. I've huh? been in it for years, man. It's, 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 I'm just, but I'm, I'm happy for the women out there. I'm, I'm glad that the men are finally supporting the women. I'm glad that the NBA is supporting the WNBA and everything's all coming together and they and they're promoting each other as one unit and that's the way it should be. So Beautiful thing right there. Uh, Brad, you got the hot spot coming up next. What you going to be talking about? Yep, coming up next in the hot spot, Prince Juice Jukebox Musical. Did I say it right? Jukebox? Yep. Jukebox. The Prince Jukebox Musical, I can't even say it, is in the works. Coming up next on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. The hot spot. Drop it like it's hot. hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot. Yeah. Damn, that's hot. You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the B-R-A-T. All right, Ricky Smiley Morning Show, 29 before the top of the hour time for the hot spot. What up, Brett? What up, Ricky? Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brett Tad Tad, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire collected 42.45.2 million in ticket sales, top of the weekend box office. Uh, Dune Part 2 came in second with 17.6 million, followed by Kung Fu Panda 4, which earned 16.8 million. The weekend's other new film in wide release was Immaculate, and it debuted at 5.4 million. Meanwhile, Ryan Coogler, the director of Black Panther, will produce a jukebox movie mu- musical uh, centered around the music of Prince. The project, which was first announced in 2018, has reportedly now taken a significant step forward with Coogler's involvement. While no additional details have been revealed, the draft of the script has already been written and the film will likely commerce in 2025 of March. It was also announced that recently Prince's Purple Rain film will be adapted into a stage musical. 
What y'all think about that? I Who think is that would be. Uh, I, that part? I, I, I got to go see that. I have I to. I know. I know the music is going to be amazing, but who going to play Prince? Lord. Mm. Yeah, that's tough. I they can't even gonna, think of it. They do, they do a little yeah. sweet, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sweet one. That's so funny. The one with the little Dr. Pepper commercial. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Last but not least, Kanye West has demanded that the music industry refer to him as Ye and not to his former slave name. Oh, that sounds like Prince. <laughs> the letter emphasizes that the decision uh, to change his name was not taken lightly and that it is now legally and permanently his name is Ye. He and his team called on streaming platforms, publishers, stores, and others to adopt the change immediately. Kanye's petition to change his legal name was approved by a Los Angeles judge back in 21 after he hinted at it on Twitter in 2018. He has explained that Ye derived from the word you and represents a reflection of both good and bad in all of us. He told, you, go ahead. No, I was about to say that name. That's that's good. That name is, is biblical. Yeah. Yeah. Yay, though, I walked through the valley of the show. <laughs> 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 As a matter of fact, he told Big Boy at a recent listening party, yay is the most commonly used word in the Bible, and it means you. Yeah, there you go. I told you. Mm. I told you. Did I say it? So it's yay, do I walk through the Yes. I, so I you? I, I go to Sunday school every Sunday. And, and I don't, well, in the Bible, yay don't seem like it would mean you if you said yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow mm -mm, of death. Don't, don't, don't get too deep, deep well, in it. Let this, don't question okay. Jesus. All right, all right. We 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 gonna wrap up the hot spot on that note. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> and coming up next, shall we get oh, Rock T's joke of the day? Rock T, what what we gonna do? Is it gonna be funny today? Yay not. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> don't be funny. Oh, Yay it is. <laughs> all right, y'all. The time now is twenty six minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. What do you call a happy cowboy? Uh, what do you call a happy cowboy? A jolly rancher. <laughs> <laughs> sounds uh, fruity. <laughs> <laughs> sounds really, really yeah. fruity. Can we say Gary? Whatever. Can you relate? <laughs> a jolly rancher. <laughs> a jolly rancher. Mm. It's a happy cowboy. Right, right. I, I don't even believe they laugh and stuff like that in the oh. second and third grade. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, they do, dog. <laughs> What did you get? Who wrote that? Uh, what what book you got that out of? Uh, a little fourth grader told it to me. Uh, Where at your you church? Short of a first down, Rock team. Say, dog, a happy cowboy, if you think about it, is a jolly rancher. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 even when you explain it, that makes it worse. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Brent, what you think? Brent, Maria? Uh, uh, it's making me smile, actually. <laughs> Man gone. Bye. <laughs> That's what you right. hear him uh, cackling. <laughs> yeah. yes. Gary, what are you going to be talking about next? All right, Ricky, coming up, y'all. I'm going to be expanding your vocabulary, y'all. I have your word of the week next. Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Capital G Capital A, mm -hmm. Capital O, mm -hmm. Capital T. B I C T H. Just Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Ricky Smiley Morning Show. It's time for Gary's. Word of the week. And you know this, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's time to expand our vocabulary uh, with the word of the week. So uh, y'all help, you know, to help us increase our vocabulary and grammar. Uh, Gary will select the word and give its definition, spelling, and example of how to use it. Gary, uh, what word are you going to try to expand our vocabulary with this week? I can't even talk right That's now. That's all right. Well, Ricky, this week's word is abhor. <laughs> it's pronounced abhor. <laughs> Now, it's an adjective, and it is spelled A-B-H-O-R. And what is an adjective, Gary, for the people out there that Ricky. don't know? Ricky. <laughs> That's his way of saying he don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. An uh, adjective is, I don't know, it's something like... Google it. <laughs> yeah, Google it. It's something like, it's like a noun. But anyway... <laughs> I don't believe you did that. <laughs> now, the definition is... To regard with disgust or hatred. Now, Ricky, here's an example of using the word in a sentence. Listening to the morning show, one would have the belief that the brat seems to abhor Rock T's joke of the day segment. Uh, is it a, is it abhor. a boar? <laughs> I think it's a boar. 
<laughs> ain't no damn a boys <laughs> abhor. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen to the morning show, one one with belief. Wait a minute. Listen to the morning show, one would have to believe that the brat seems to abhor Rock T's joke of the day. That means, like, dislike? Yep, to, yes. she, she, she hates it. Yeah, abhor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we got to start. Now, that's a good word word to use. That's an easy word to remember, mm-hmm. you know, because we all say whore, right. but yeah. you say abhor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's, and, it's a, uh, and it's an adjective. And, we got to, and, once, and once we find out what, what an adjective is, It'll really yeah. all come together. We got to go exactly. to the You know, it's like we don't, we know, but we don't know. It's exactly. So Maybe that'll be the next word of the week. Adjective. Adjective. Maria, you know what adjective? Anybody know what adjective? It, it sh- it's a word that describes a noun. Gives a description to a noun. Right, because a noun is a person, place, or a thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so what's a verb? It's an action word. A verb is action. action word. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay, easy. So what's a pronoun? Gary, Miss Byron, and, 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 and Miss Miss Thomas, and all all, all his homeboys. Oh, that was a good answer, Ricky. Pronouns. Yeah, that's right. All right, so he, that, she, them, theirs. You do your children no favor by trying to give them everything you didn't get. You are who you are because of your parents telling you no on some stuff. And if you want to pass down something. Pass down that morality that yes. some things you have to work for. Yes, sir. Because your children are growing up in a world that you did not grow up in. The devil mm. wants you to eat your seed because if you eat your dinner in the morning, you will have nothing at night. So if you mismanage your seed, then your seed won't know how to manage theirs. So what we don't know is our children are watching us live in this debt cycle. And they're growing up thinking, okay, so anytime I get to the cash register, I can get whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. I can do it whenever I feel like it. And then they grow up and do it. And here's the problem. They're not making at their age what you were making at yours. So you have to learn to tell yourself no so your children can learn the word no, too. Mmm. Hold it. Half man, half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the T. Mm-mm. It's Gary, baby. Gary has the tea and the color of the day. Gary, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Monday, a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Reality TV star Kim Kardashian and NFL star Odom Odell Beckham, y'all, have reportedly broken up, y'all, after six months of dating. Now, they're saying, y'all, that the former couple were first romantically linked in September last year after being spotted in each other's company. Now, they're saying, according to reports, the duo have parted ways shortly after it was a Alleged y'all that Kardashian was open to having more kids with the football player, and they're saying he allegedly didn't want any more kids. But a lot of people are saying one of the reasons why, too, they may be breaking up because of Kim Kardashian's psoriasis. Now, they're saying she's a spokesperson for the psoriasis foundation. She's speaking out about it. Psoriasis goes up her legs, up between her thighs, she said, and, you know, she said it's painful. People were criticizing her because, you know, they said she loves to lay in tanning beds, but she said the tanning beds help her psoriasis and stuff. But some people saying that Odell may have not wanted to see that in that area, and this is one of the reasons probably why Kanye left her, and now Odell oh, is breaking no, up after no. six she can't months. Help that, no. Well, she can't help it, though. But psoriasis, I mean, it's a scaly, like, it's your thing. When I think of psoriasis, I mean, even though this is different than for Diva, but it reminds me of Wendy Williams' feet. You know, it gets kind of scaly, and it's itchy, they're saying. And they're saying that, I guess, they try to keep their relationship on a low key, but he just decided that he just couldn't stay no longer. After yeah, psoriasis. Uh, anybody know anybody with psoriasis? I think I've seen it before. Yeah. Um, or whatever. Uh, but, but they, oh, my God, I just couldn't imagine. I, but I, don't, I don't think that's why they broke up. You think they they no. just uh, scheduling? And... No, there was no scheduling. They knew they had schedules Ricky, when they first got together, honey. So he knew his schedule, and she knew. But did he her. say anything about the psoriasis? Or you think? Yeah, but they were just saying people are speculating that it could be because of the psoriasis and stuff. Was so that you speculate? No, that's what people are saying. I mean, it's all out in the reports and stuff. And she's finally speaking out about it. That she wants her fans to know that this is what she's dealing with. So. You know, and she's the spokesperson for psoriasis, so I could only imagine her. But, I mean, Kanye left her, and now Odell Beckham. And, you know, black men that usually love women of non-color don't leave, but he done left. So it's, it's, it's an interesting situation. So all we could do, honey, is keep her lifted up in our prayers, honey, and hopefully everything goes well with Kim and her psoriasis. So, wow. <laughs> Why are you getting so that soft? Not nice. No, because it's, it's a sad situation. What you, I mean, it's a commercial for psoriasis, but anyway. Moving on. <clears throat> in other celebrity news, y'all, 
Michael Blackson is speaking out, y'all. He is definitely speaking out. They said he gave President Joe Biden some advice, y'all, on how to win the vote of every black man in America. Now, they're saying, according to Blackson, he said if Joe Biden, President Biden cancels child support, he'll win their votes without a problem. Now, they're saying Blackson's wife, who is not married, but he has been with his longtime partner, Georgia Rain, who is an R&B singer on and off for years. He said that he has three kids from previous relationships, a son, Michael Jr., and the twins, Nico and Noah. Now, they say he's kept his baby mamas and his children out of the public eye, y'all, for a while. But back in 2022, y'all, they say he went viral after Ben Simmons, y'all, slid into his fiance's DMs. Now, he said, quote, he didn't try to holler at one of my chiefs. If he tried to holler at one of my side chiefs, it wouldn't matter. He tried to holler at my fiance, Blackson said. And, you know, they said he was just very angry about that. So he's telling the president this is what he should do, though. But isn't that crazy? How did you sit there and say not to pay your child support, though? But then he is a comedian, and this is what they say. So let's just. Yeah, them dudes would be lined up. By AK. If, if Joe Biden was getting rid of child support and, and put that as a campaign promise, hey, who are, who would Come be standing, on, man. He standing would in line? 40, he would win 49 states. <laughs> <laughs> if he came up, if he really wanted to just seal this thing, just say that, and then as he get elected, say, man, and y'all know I was just playing right. Right. <laughs> be the smartest or he could ever promise ever. to enforce child support and get a lot of votes that way as oh, well. Yeah. Or he could put a, a, a salary cap on it and say, all right, no matter how much money he got, you only get 300 a month. <laughs> what? Unless he likes it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no matter how much. Or, 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 or the parent get uh, two weeks with the mom and two weeks with the dad. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 equal time. How about no that? Matter, no matter what. Right. Two and weeks with mama, two it. weeks with daddy. Yeah, every, day, every day you miss, that's a day you do in jail. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I you like miss. that, Ricky. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I like you that. Come picking up talking. your kids, you're going to jail for a day. So Ooh. pick them up. Pick them up. Oh. <laughs> the Kahlua today, honey, is one of my favorite Kahlua's. My Kahlua today, y'all, yeah, is Midnight Onyx. On the high end, you say Midnight Onyx, and on the long end, you say Beautiful Black. That's your Kahlua for today. Oh, y'all, y'all give it up for Gary with the team. Yeah. 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 All right, Rick, Kyle, morning, y'all got the wake up call. Y'all get it, your boy eight six six nine. Ricky, here we go. Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's time to get yourself together. Get it together. You up this long, just lead you in your house. You start with me, baby. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Encourage each other and be productive. I ain't on the show. Wake up, wake up, wake up. 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 This is Sean and the Robinson family calling from Tampa, Florida. We'd like to give a shout-out to my wife, Tiffany, working at Chasco Elementary and Trinity Oaks Elementary. Wake up, wake up, wake up. This is Courtney calling from OKC. I want to wake up the OU shuttle bus and my kids. Wake up, wake up. Mika calling from Baton Rouge. Want to tell Brenda Faye to wake up, wake up, wake up. Hey, it's Jasmine. I'm calling from Cincinnati. I want to wake up all of the tri-state area. I love the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. You all just keep me so upbeat and keep me moving. Everybody have a great day. This morning, we got a DM from a young lady in Dallas uh, who has come to play and expose in a family secret. Uh, here's what she said happened. So I'm from the Dallas area, and I have a cousin. We're really, really close. And I found out a little while ago that my uncle actually cheated on my aunt. And I've never, ever told her this, and I know that it would break her heart. But I just want to know, because now she's turning 18, and... Everyone else in the family kind of knows, but she doesn't know. And she's not even, we're not all sure if that's even her biological father. Would it be wrong if I had a personal conversation with her and let her know, especially since everyone else in the family knows? Oh, my God. Maria, I don't know. What what, what do you think about that? You, you know, it's interesting, and I'm just going to put a little bit of, of my family business without saying names, but I, I actually told a family member about something I knew about biological father, this and that. And I can tell you, Ricky, it was the worst mistake I ever made. I should have just left it alone Mm -hmm. because it just, it just opened up just, oh, which is so, it was so emotional and it was just better just left a secret. 
you know. So she's well, really well, why y'all yeah. think Bill like he should have left it a secret when it's something that it's got to come out one day somehow or another, right? Well, let well, it we'll come get... out on its own time. Exactly. Don't let it come out with yeah. somebody telling it. You don't need yeah. to be telling it. I'm that. telling you from personal <clears throat> experience, it was a mistake. Telling is always a mistake. Let the mother or the father say something yeah. if they feel that they want to. Leave it to either the mother or the father to mention it. Like, I don't think anybody else should step in and say that because it, it, this, ooh, that's deep. And it depends on the situation. I mean, yeah. if, that she, if she, that ain't her mom or dad, that's different. I told on my mom and daddy. So that's what I did. <laughs> I'm about to say. So that's oh. my family. So yeah. I told. Backhand you. <laughs> well. Right. I think it so. should be up to the parents or whichever one of the parents that the child is with or whatever. But they ain't going to tell the truth. So okay. Well, if don't they don't, then, then then that's up to them. Exactly. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Some things is okay to take it to the grave. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Mm. Really? Yeah. And, yeah, and, and really. And it probably varies somebody, from family to family also. Yeah, you know, somebody, it does. Like, if there's somebody out here that don't know who their real mom or daddy is, and it's okay to take something like that to the grave, well, why, why won't you just tell it before you go to the grave? Like, at no. Your land, bro. Why and would if the you? Truth is, if the truth I mean, is going to be more you, destructive, then, you know. Why, why you can't be like, <sighs> you know, Charles, your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and then that. <laughs> <laughs> That may send him to the grave early. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, would you hurt somebody? Hey, 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 <laughs> can't, 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 can't give me the last, the last, last thing, last, last two or three things somebody say before they die. What's, what's... <laughs> oh, you know when that money got stole that time? Yeah, it was me. <laughs> uh... <laughs> you know when I told you the herpes test came back negative? I was lying. Oh. Uh... <laughs> This is the last thing they say before they die, special case. That's your Brett, Brett, Brett. Brett, give me a last breath. Give me a last <laughs> breath. The last thing you say before you leave, you, but you got to admit something. <laughs> I stole your money. You know how you thought I smashed your friend? Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> I stole your money. <laughs> 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 oh, why did breath so deep? Oh, oh. This time I act like I, I liked your mama. I never did. <laughs> I'm good, man. You know, just kicking off the week inside the mix, man. Of course, hit me up on the gram at J A H Lion. So, man, y'all know hey, you played that Beyonce game and did a split. Can't get up. Get him up. Somebody get him up. Somebody get him up. <laughs> Gary, Gary, Gary. I'm up, hell. Them, le- them legs don't go back like that no more. Yeah, sure don't. <laughs> all right, baby. <laughs> John Lyon on the one. Hey, John, we always appreciate you, man. Yeah, but my flesh never hit done. Let's see where your, let's see where your boy, at, uh, uh, the person that you recommended. Uh, yeah. uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Black right. Tony. But I can't shout. I can't hardly talk right now. Black right, Tony. It's Holy Week. <laughs> it's Holy Week. We're okay. going in, into Easter. Jesus arose on the third on the dirt on the third day. So I got a, I got a legit a legitimate on um, see excuse today, so again. Okay. So I got bad I got a bad or uh, headache, real bad, like a uh, super bad headache, so I can't even I can't even hardly talk right now. I'm over here to, I'm 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 gonna tell you my situation because I need somebody to come over here and help me out. What you mean? I'm at the old, uh, I don't at the old motel seat. I'm in the motel seat, so we don't know. I thought you was like in the hospital, or like at urgent care. Nah, I'm at the motel seat because I oh, ain't over. I ain't came over here last night to go. Um, go shout out for the came and met me over here, but uh, and um, I had done came. I had talked to. Her. I said, look, shout. I said, you coming for real? She said, Black Tony, I'm gonna be there. She said, baby, I can't wait to get get at you. I said, okay, look. I said, I'm finna get the room now. It was like 11 o'clock. I said, now, you know, I got to go to work in the morning. So I can't be met, you know, I got to be through by six. And she said, she said, get the room. So I got the room, took two yeah. rhino pills. So I took two rhino pills and I, I had for another rhino pill. I wanted to, you know, this my, man. You took two? You said, which, which two, gas said you took, bought the rhino pills? Took, I took the rhino pills. Huh? Okay, which, which one of them gas stations you bought the rhino pill from? It was a, mar- a marathon. <laughs> Yeah, the one with the lights in the window. Yeah, and they, and they got a little chicken place on the inside where they sell fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, dog. Yo, but look, shout out, that's neither here nor though. Yeah. So I done took the damn pill, 
And then so they're going to call me after I've been there for like a whole hour. Talking about she can't call her baby daddy came home. And now I'm laying up in my head or so bad. I called Dr. Call. He said, you got me. You said you better get somebody over there to help you out. Cause yeah. he, said, he said it's like a crock pot. <laughs> it's like a crock let, pot. Yeah, he said you got to let that pressure off. I thought the like a pressure cooker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all you so any, any women's listening, I don't care what you look like. I don't care you short, tall, fat, black, <laughs> dark, white. <laughs> messy, I don't give a damn. Can you please come to the motel six? I'm in room 13. <laughs> you pitching a tent over there? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. Put my number out there. I don't care, Saudi. I don't just send somebody over here to call. Hey, you, you ever yeah, see somebody man. do the helicopter when they break dancing? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Black Tony, you better test some up. Somebody, what, tell them where you're at one more time, Black Tony. I'm at Motel 6 off with the industrial. I'm a 20, please. Make sure you holler at Black Tony. He'll keep the light on for you. Diving board. <laughs> the door going to be unlocked. Just come on. <laughs> See, I'ma let you know who the best by the hour. We like Rosie O'Donnell at a bisexual bridal shower. It ain't nothing to me, man. I keep it for real. Look at this dental man with dental the grill. See, I'm the best. I told you that. This dude like that, he ran in front of the cat. Now I messed up, but I'ma stay on top. They told me, man, but you know, I'm never gonna flop off the pedestal. I'm the best, man. You need to go to the f***ing dental. Sign him up, Brett. <laughs> Hold it. He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the T. It's Gary, baby. Gary has the T and the color of the day, Gary. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Monday, a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Everybody's raving Vivica A. Fox, baby. Now, Miss Fox was spotted the other day, y'all, at the premiere of Shirley. Y'all know that's the new movie with Regina King, Shirley Chisholm story. And people were saying, some people were saying maybe she may have been off of her Ozempic, allegedly, because they were saying she looked very Medea-ish. Some people thought she was Medea. They uh -uh. put in the pro, they said, is that Medea? <laughs> Oh, she Damn. got the wrong plan, Shirley Chisholm? Um, Regina King does. No, not Vivica. Regina King does. And people thought that Vivica Fox was Honey Madea. So people said maybe she was oh, off of her oh, Ozempic or something. Let me see the picture. Legend. Oh, God. Don't mm -hmm. put that up on the internet. Yes. But Vivica the looks good. no damn joke. They she no does joke. look good. Yes, honey. How they going to think that woman, honey, talking about she look like Madea? The minute... <laughs> The minute I saw it, I, I went and ordered a car shield. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but she looks amazing, honey. Some people say she's looking koala-ish, but I'm like, child, whatever, honey. Vivica oh, looks wow. amazing. And she looked like a United States senator. That's what she looks like in that picture. Yeah, look at that suit she had on. Yeah, honey, bless her spirit, uh, honey. Let's but, go. Yes, yeah, but congratulations to Miss Fox. All right, moving on in other celebrity news, y'all. Oh, my God, Beyonce them are being very petty. Now, it's being reported that Beyonce's team, honey, checked R&B singer Miss Erica Badu for accusing the Texas Hold'em singer for copying her signature hairstyle. Now, Erica Badu, 53, and um, accused 42-year-old Beyonce of jacking her beaded braid style on the alternate cover Wait of Wait a minute. Bass, yes. Now, they said baby Erica begged y'all for Jay-Z for help after the Beehive swarmed her on Twitter. Well, now, according to sources, they're saying Beyonce's publicist, Ms. Yvette Noel Sure, and her Parkwood Entertainment senior vice president, Justina Omuko, took the rare step, y'all, of checking Miss Badu publicly. Now, Justina used lyrics from Erica's hit song, Call Tyrone, to chastise her and warn her to contact someone besides Jay-Z for help. And Yvette shared the collage of Beyonce's wearing braided wigs with bees all over them years before. Now, last week, now, Beyonce, you know, she revealed the cover of her um, Act 2 Cowboy Carter, the follow-up of her Renaissance album. They say on the cover, Beyonce is sitting on a pale horse while wearing patriotic red, white, and blue colors and holding the American flag. And this week, you know, reason she did, you know, reveal the alternative cover and whatever. But I think that was very petty for Beyonce's people to do that to Erica Badu. Erica Badu is the queen, honey. She says the standard. Why would Beyonce and people go and attack this woman behind some mess like that? I mean, I, I, that's just... 
that starts problems, y'all. And I, I don't believe um, Beyonce let these women do this, but they did. And then gonna tell her to go call Tyrone, honey. That was tacky. <laughs> That was very tacky. Is <laughs> that what they said? Yeah, they're going to tell her to go call Tyrone and don't call Jay-Z, honey. I thought that was wrong for that, though. But nevertheless, we hope this is all resolved <laughs> and everything, you know, be okay. Because we love Erica and we love Beyonce, too. But I just... I, What's wrong, Bray? <laughs> and they said when the beehive... Uh, now, you know she's going to call it Ben Cuffs. When the beehive got up, they told her what? Call Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. She going to cuss us out. That's a good one. Yeah, but I just don't believe her people did that. But nevertheless, we hope this is all resolved, honey. And, you Be know, quiet, bro. Go well, honey, you know, with this situation. Y'all. <laughs> In my quick story, y'all can And ain't nobody said that you said that, probably. No, no that's, that's, you. that's her messy um, publicist, that's honey. Gary. They got to keep their um, jobs, honey, so they got to do what they got to do, honey. So they said, we're going to tell her, honey. So, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We love all of them. All right, y'all. Tiffany Hash, they say she's doing well, y'all. They say, honey, uh, she's living a sober lifestyle after her recent DUI arrest. And they say she admits that being sober, y'all, isn't all that of her decision, honey. And that's a good thing, honey. She joined the conversation, y'all, recently. And, you know, she talked about it. And, you know, it's good to be sober, especially if you're getting DUIs like Tiffany was getting and what have you and stuff. And I think she was probably severely depressed because of Carmen, breaking up with Carmen and then going to Jennifer. I, I, I kind of feel her pain, though. So let's keep her lifted up in our prayers, y'all. And hopefully she get us. <laughs> somebody else, honey. You know, another um, rap or whatever Carmen oh, did. Lord. All right, the Kahlua today is one of my favorite Kahlua's. My Kahlua today, y'all, is Midnight Onyx. On the high end, you say Midnight Onyx, and on the low end, you say Beautiful Black. That's your Kahlua for today. All right, y'all, give it up for Gary with the team. Yeah. It's what's trending now. One of the biggest and most common mistakes parents can make is to try to be their child's best friend. And I know that you want to love your child and be supportive, uh, you know, being a friend means like the lines of authority get blurred when it comes time for discipline. And joining us, joining us this morning is the family therapist, Dr. Aldewan Tart. Uh, Dr. Tart, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, man, happy to have you. Let's talk about, uh, you know, defining parental roles, um, what happens, you know, when parents try to uh, befriend their children. Uh, give us a good balance, Dr. Tart. All right, when we think about parenting, it's really about having the good mix of love and discipline at the same time. And any parent knows how difficult that can be. But what we're looking for is relationship first. Ricky, you know, how many parents have you seen? And you know this because of how many kids that you parented and, and mentored. When we try to discipline before the relationship and the love was strong, that always backfires. Right, right. Tell me when it's too much but discipline we, and not enough love and affection. Yeah, but we can also go the other direction of where there's so much love and then no discipline. And then you have kids who you love, but they have no structure and no order. And they end up actually disrespecting you. So the mix is what we want is we want to be able to establish that love and that con con consistent connection first. Then we want to build in consistency. To the key is we want to have time and consistency and then discipline. A lot of times we don't have to discipline our kids when we already have that structure, that consistency, and every day is almost the same. But we also allow you to be able to make mistakes, be able to talk about it, and our kids have the W word. If there's anything I want people to remember, our kids need to feel warmth. And warmth is what psychologists explain is your kids – feeling love so that when they're disciplined, they understand it as correction versus feeling abused or taken advantage of. That's uh, right. Just me. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the words that you just said, uh, Dr. Tart, that stood out to me was uh, consistency. And, you know, sometimes, especially when there's two households or the parents aren't together or there's a co-parenting type situation going on, there can be instant inconsistencies in how the children are disciplined. What advice do you have for that? Like, can this type of parallel parenting exist and work? Well, it has to. Um, kids, kids know how to navigate two environments that are similar, but when they're totally different, it's difficult. So what I recommend is parents, regardless of what happened in your relationship, we should be great co-parents. We should be able to have meetings you know, at least once or twice a month about how things are going and how do we get on the same page with consistency. 
quality time, making sure homework is done, being able to talk to kids and just spend face time. You know, a lot of times we make the mistakes of just giving kids directives versus actually spending time with them and getting to know what's going on in their world. So, yes, the blending of families and talking as parents is, is necessary. Even if you should be able to communicate via email to say, all right, when's the homework due? Or what's going on with graduation? Or what do we need to do about these scholarships and SAT scores and, and track and so on and so forth? We're obligated to make sure that we're consistent with our kids regardless of what happens in a relationship. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dr. Dr. Tarr, it's, it's, um a lot of kids have situations where they live with, uh, you know, uh, time with, their, uh, with, with one parent and time with the other parent. And, you know, uh, one parent just, just straight up love, discipline, and structure. And uh, so, so what happens is when the kids want to go to the other parent where, you know, the parent is more, more lenient, uh, th- does that confuse kids? It does, but a lot of times parents kind of balance it off. Like if they feel like they have an overly punitive dad, just a structure, 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 or a mom who's too harsh, the other parent won't want to, they'll see the need of an affection and grace and forgiveness. So a lot of times parents try to balance it out. But in a healthy relationship, both parents are able to do both. They're able to have somewhat similar uh, structure and, and being able to talk about it. Here's the, the piece. If you talk to your kids... A lot of times they'll tell you what they need. They'll say, hey, yeah, I get it. I need to do X, Y, and Z, but I need a little softness right now. You haven't hugged me in a week. Are you giving me five directives or tell me what I do wrong, but you haven't told me what I'm doing right? And we haven't been on a daddy-daughter date or mom-son date in, in a year. But I'll clean my room up, take a shower, do this, do that. Most kids need love and affection. That's the buffer, even when we are a little bit too harsh with our words because all parents are human. But what we cannot afford to not give our kids is that love and that affection and time. Love is spelled T-I-M-E when it comes to our kids, and that's why we have to work less or stop watching this Netflix, get, get, get off YouTube. All this stuff is cool, and I'm on it too. But first thing we need is 15 minutes alone with each one of our kids on a daily basis to check in and see them so that they know that not only do we see them, but we feel them. And when kids know that we feel them, that's that warmth that makes kids feel loved. Mm. That way love and discipline can go together. That's all. Uh, that's money. Hey, how are you, you going to discipline me if you don't feel me? No, that's for right. right. Hey, come on, man. Look, Dr. Tart, see, me and Crystal, we, we consider ourselves kind of fun parents. Like, we okay. always have fun. We always cracking jokes and stuff, but we know when it's time to be serious, and we always set those bond- boundaries with our kids. Like, we, we let them know, look, don't get it twisted now. You know, structure, discipline always comes first. We're going to have fun. We're going to have a good time. Is that – can that be confused with trying to be your friends, being friends to your kids if you like, always kind of laughing and joking around too much or whatever with your kids? I mean, it worked no, out, it's working out for us, but sometimes that can be confused, confusing to the kid. No, it's needed. It's needed. Like any – and this surprised me because y'all know I have a teenager. She's on the way hopefully to Howard, y'all. H U. You know, I pray, yeah. but, you know, but um, I noticed that when she turned like 14, 15, 16, I had to go more towards the friend range. Why? Because we have to do things together. We have to go on dates. We have to go to virtual reality gaming and, and, and uh, daddy-daughter dances, even though she's a teenager. Why is that important? Because that friendship, that's the bridge to your new relationship. You're not going to discipline a 22-year-old. A 23-year-old, a 25-year-old, you have to have that bond. And this is especially true for the mothers listening. The average daughter talks to her mom at least five to seven times a week, five to seven right. times a week. Oh, yeah. Right. And if you don't have that bond, you don't have that connection, then, then your child doesn't have that sense of warmth. And, and every kid is different. I'm not saying if your child doesn't talk to you every day that you fail somehow as a mom. But we need to have that emotional connection, which means that the base of it, is friendship, but with respect for authority. That's the difference. Right. Go ahead, Special K. You was about to say? Oh, no. I was just agreeing with what he said. Okay. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Tart, if anybody want to reach you, thank you so much. This is valuable information uh, and, and as we're learning, uh, you know, as time go on, because sometimes, you know, our parents, they did the best they could with what they knew, but you always do better when you know better, and we really appreciate this information if anybody want to reach you, how can they find you? Yeah, just go to drtart.com. That's D R 
T A R T T dot com or hop on Instagram at Dr. Tart at D R T A R T T. And parents, just remember warmth. Just make sure your kids know that you feel them. And I mean, you agree. Yeah. They know that you feel them. You feel them. There it is. All right, man. Appreciate that, Dr. The one and only Dr. Al DeWan Tart. Hey, Maria, what you got this morning? Uh, this story is about a 47-year-old California pastor. His name is Samuel Davalos Pasillas. Uh, he recently was arrested for allegedly paying two men to kill his daughter's boyfriend. No. So here's the story. Last week, Riverside police arrested Samuel after gathering, gathering evidence that he had ordered the attempted murder of a man. Now, the victim was shot multiple times while sitting in his car. The shooters quickly drove away, but the victim survived by driving himself to a nearby hospital. So listen, five months later, police concluded that the incident was a murder-for-hire shooting orchestrated by the girlfriend's father, Pastor Pasillas. Now, uh, Pasillas, the L's are silent there. It's P-A-S-I-L-L-A-S, Pasillas. Okay, they are, oh Mm -hmm. man, he must have been like, like real bad or something and got his daughter caught up. Not, not to justify anything, because that's wrong. You don't pay mm-hmm. nobody to kill nobody. Yeah, he paid him almost $40,000, and he just said the reason for wanting the man dead is he wanted the daughter to break up with the man. The daughter refused to do so, so he said, well, how else can I get rid of you? Yeah, well, he not- said that uh, to the guy? Um, well, that's what police un- uh, discovered, is that he wanted the guy dead because the girlfriend wouldn't break so up. So it wasn't with necessary so in retaliation for mm-hmm. something the boy had done to the girl. No. Yeah, you could have took that $40,000 and moved all the way across the country and made that relationship real hard. Yeah. Mm. But I want to know how old the daughter is, though, because it makes a difference. I don't know. Is she 17? Is she 26? I don't know. Well, however her age is, it's obvious that this man is not a real pastor because had he been a real pastor, he know the Lord would take care of him. So why would he want to have this man killed? Right. Yeah, yeah and the Bible, right. the Bible clearly says, thou shalt not kill. That's right. Yeah. A little bit overprotective, maybe. Overprotective dad. Yes. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, yeah, and uh, he's kind of suspect because the guy that he hired, his name was Juan Manuel, uh, 55-year-old. That sounds like the name of a hitman. So, like, how you got these connections yeah. and you supposed to be a pastor? Wait, wait, yeah, yeah, like you're going to get a hitman. He got to be in his 20s. You can't have nobody uh, 55. Because he told him. I'm, yeah. I'm saying that yeah. based off of movies I'm seeing, not stereotypes, just to be clear. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, saying that sounds like the name of a hitman. <laughs> Juan Spe- Manuel in the um, movies. It sounds like the name of a hitman. Uh, uh, right. <laughs> Special case, somebody in their fifties, what they gonna do before they kill somebody if they hire for murder versus somebody in their twenties. <laughs> well they 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 gonna they gonna sit in the car with the gun in their lap with drinking coffee. Got to have that coffee. As soon as, as soon as I finish this coffee, I'm gonna blast him. <laughs> <laughs> what about somebody in their twenties? <laughs> uh, somebody in their twenties just gonna pull up in that Dodge Charger. <laughs> pull that thing out from under that long white t shirt. <laughs> he ain't gonna think about it. He ain't gonna care about no, nothing. Uh. He's gonna bust. He just gonna bust. He's what what about somebody? What does somebody in their late seventies uh, get high from her? What they gonna do? <laughs> the, the person they pulled the murder gonna get away because they done fell asleep. <laughs> so they the with the gun in their lap. Finance, wealth, and growth. It's Money Mondays on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all, Rick, Rick Smiley, the morning show. Hey, 11 minutes after the hour, y'all, with over 4 million homeowners and renters insurance claim filed annually. Nothing is worse than filing a claim and not getting fully reimbursed for your loss. Uh, we got our money expert, Janot Thorne. We're so happy to have you here this morning. Janot Thorne, y'all. Janot, Janot. Is here to share valuable information on properly protecting our valuables. Uh, Janot, good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy Money Monday. Happy Money Happy Money Monday. Cause we, we broke, Janai. We need help. <laughs> <laughs> I know you tell it a lot. I know you tell it a lot. So um, let's jump right in. So what I think is really shocking to a lot of people, Ricky, is people just assume if you have a renter's or homeowner's insurance policy, something happens, a theft or a fire, you will just be reimbursed for all of the items that you lost. And that's not true. And we have to think about it. For the expensive things that we have, like jewelry and furs and computers and even things like hearing aids, those items are only covered up into a certain limit and is really low, normally as low as three or $5,000. So that shocks people. You know, you have a loss. You know, your jewelry is stolen and it's 
worth five or ten thousand dollars and you may only get a check for three thousand dollars so we have to take the next step to make sure we're fully protecting all of the items that we work so hard for yeah, and we do work hard for these items. And, you know, I've heard a lot of stories. Janai, first of all, good morning. I'm sorry. Uh, I've heard a lot of stories about, you know, people trying to file claims for the items that were stolen uh, but not getting what they feel like they were worth. Now, is it true that you may need to get an appraisal for items like jewelry or furs to get them covered by your insurance? Um, yeah, that's true. So you may not need that for like your expensive workout equipment, Maria, like your Peloton bike, <laughs> but for your jewelry or your furs, you actually do need an appraisal for those items. And well, you're going to have to get an additional... I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't got no fur, Ricky? Fur. You don't got no fur? Yeah. I ain't never owned no fur in my fur. life. I might need to what? give me a little some, some. Well, you Why? need to. Yeah, you do. Uh, Girl, let I me wear your coat. You could wear my coat. You could wear whichever one you want. How many you got? <laughs> I think six. <laughs> See what I'm saying? A lot, lot of folks still have fur. But yes. we have to have, y'all, an additional policy, which is called a personal articles policy. So you can't just have your homeowner's or renter's insurance. You have to get a personal articles policy for Gary to cover that fly fur, all that amazing jewelry that he has, in order to make sure it's properly covered. And you really do, um, Janai, because, honey, I had to have, I mean, you have to have each individual piece appraised. And appraisal is not cheap. Let's I say mean, that. I didn't, I didn't know that. Like, like, they would come to your house and appraise the fur coat or No, jewelry? you take it up to, you can take it up to the, um, to the to place and, and, yeah. and they'll appraise it what for place? you. What place? To the appraisal. Usually when you get it, you can get an appraisal for <laughs> exactly. whatever the item is. Yep, you, you can, can if it's jewelry. at the time. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if it's jewelry. But fur, places that sell fur, you can get your fur appraised there. Mm. Um, High-end jewelry stores, um, like in Atlanta, like Mayor's Jewelers, high-end places, you can actually to get an appraisal done now they could be yes. inexpensive like fifty dollars but i've seen them go up to like 150 dollars per item but it is well worth it to protect the investment that you've made in these items you need to get your appraisals done yep oh my god uh so, so uh I, I i had no idea so every single thing like let me see like a fur like i have a uh, couple of horns uh i have a piano yeah uh my instruments so all of that all of that kind of stuff yeah, you can get your body parts insured, too. What? Yeah. yeah. Now, you don't have to get an appraisal for your piano, but you need to let them know that you have it. Because if something happens to that piano, you may not get reimbursed for the full amount. Because, again, more than likely your coverage for your personal, your items that you have, is probably not more than three or $5,000 for your high-end items. Mm -hmm. So you literally, like Gary is saying, each thing has to be listed separately so the insurance company knows what they're reimbursing you for. Is your responsibility, Ricky, to tell the story of what you own? Otherwise, again, something happens, you will not get a full reimbursement. And you know how frustrating that is. Ooh. Yeah, that's, oh, my God. Yeah, insurance is so, uh, Jana, one day you, uh, we would love you to come on and talk because there's a lot of places like Tennessee, Kentucky, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. Uh, South Carolina and uh, the, uh, the the Panhandle of uh, Florida, that, where there's a lot of tornado talking about tornadoes and, and insurance with tornado damage, uh, uh, because the South, especially around April, uh, March right. and April, is a bad time of year. Let people know exactly what type of insurance that they need they to need have. To have. Uh, yeah. I think we yep. should extend this conversation uh, or whatever going into uh, hurricane season because. It's uh it's already bad uh in high winds. It's high winds this morning, Jana, actually. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know what? We will absolutely do that next segment for sure. We'll cover all those storms because I know there were some crazy storms in the Midwest over the weekend. We want to make sure that everybody is good. And like you said, that they're properly covered. There's nothing worse, again, than having that loss. Being in a storm, something crazy happens, and you're not going to be made whole. You know, we, we, want, we work so hard. We want to be made That's whole. That's right. Janai, let everybody know, and we always appreciate you, let everybody know how you can be reached. Um, you can certainly follow me at Janai Thornton. That's J-I-N-I-T-H-O-R-N-T-O-N. And for those of y'all who live in Atlanta, I'm having an appraisal event for your fur coat and jewelry on Saturday, April 20th at Phipps Plaza. So you can go to me on Instagram or you can go to thankmelaterappraisal.com to sign up to get that all those amazing items appraised. Oh wow, that's awesome! Hey Brett, thank Yo. you tonight. Thank you tonight, Brett. 
You said yeah. you, you said uh you get body body parts. Yeah, Mariah's legs are insured. What? Okay, well hey, hey, I got a couple of things. I know, <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. News headlines, entertainment, sports. It's the front page on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, Rick's on the morning show, 27 after the hour. Y'all got your front page right here. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, RSMS family. Here's what's happening in news. Donald Trump's legal team and the New York Attorney General's office are working hard ahead of the former president's Monday deadline. Today is a day to secure a bond for the multi-million dollar civil fraud judgment against him. Now, legal experts say Trump has one of three options. Number one, pay the money. We see that that's probably not going to happen. Uh, number two, get his assets seized. I'm talking buildings, houses, cars, helicopters, and his plane are in play. Right? And that hair. And that and hair. And that hair, yep. yeah. How do you repossess that? Um, the main focus take could be off. on his... <laughs> just take it off. Yeah. Or let Big the wind blow. Blonde lace front. <laughs> That's all it is. Uh, take it off. We'll, we'll take it. Yeah, and the way it flips over to the side when the wind blows. Um, oh, yeah. The main focus could be on his bank accounts, which experts say will be easier to take hold of. And uh, get this, I didn't know, filing for bankruptcy is also an option. Um, if he doesn't win his appeal, he could file for bankruptcy. Of course, that's not something that he wants to do, and I don't think his and pride. And that's not going to prevent him from having to pay the money. Right, that it's part. He's going to save some of his assets. Yeah. Well, today is the day, and we're going to find out. Uh, in other news, the Affordable Connectivity Program has helped more than 23 million low-income U.S. households pay for Internet service. Uh, they could face higher bills or even get kicked offline when their plans expire in April. The looming disaster could affect nearly one in five households nationwide, or about 60 million Americans if lawmakers don't act soon. Lastly, $1.1 billion is up for grabs after no winning Powerball ticket withdrawn on Friday night. The next drawing is tomorrow night, uh, Tuesday. Uh, an estimated 525.8 million lump sum payout if you don't want to wait the 30 years to get the full $1.1 billion. Tuesday's Powerball is the eighth largest in U.S. lottery history. Try it out. Get yourself a ticket. I'm Maria Moore, and that's what's happening in news. For updates and more headlines, visit rickysmileymorningshow.com. Rock T, what's going on in sports? What it do, Damn. Maria? Man, let me tell y'all something. If y'all ain't watching the March Madness tournaments, then something the matter with you. Let's start off with the men. Like, the Sweet 16 is already set. My final four are still in the field. UConn, North Carolina, Houston, and Purdue. Let's get on over to the women. Because everybody watching the women's tournament, it is what it is, man. It's by far, in my opinion, no disrespect to the men, but the women's tournament, man, is more entertaining. The go, that's my opinion. I'm gonna sure go. Is. I'm gonna go ahead and give South Carolina the championship, man. They undefeated Damn, for a reason. Right. That's, that, you just came right out of the bat. We ain't even in the. Are we in the Sweet Sixteen? We yet? almost have to fill the set. They got more games tonight, so the games, the winners of tonight's games, they How get. You just go at like. Uh, let me tell you uh, something about Don Staley and what's happening out there in South. No disrespect to LSU. No disrespect to Stanford. Oh, yeah, oh it is. UConn, it is. Texas. I don't of, care what Iowa how many disclaimers you put out. It Come is on. disrespectful no, it ain't. to act like Angel Reese don't exist. No, we ain't saying she don't exist. Okay, Everybody well, knows stop Angel it. exists. Stop it. Come on now, she a dog, and everybody out Stop there at LSU. But South Carolina beat Presbyterian by fifty. They beat North Carolina oh, man, by that's forty-seven. Church. That's a church. Them children full of the Holy Ghost. You know there's gonna be a school the name Presbyterian. Come they on, beat man. North Carolina by forty-seven. They did. No, you know. <laughs> but but hey, no disrespect. LSU punched their tickets in the Sweet Sixteen. They just beat Middle Tennessee, man, by like thirty points, man. Duke upset Ohio State. They got to the Sweet Sixteen. Stanford Dang. and Iowa State. They had a dog fight in overtime last night. Do a game come on tonight. Man, there's a couple games that come on tonight, man. I'm talking about women's. I ain't talking about this. Yeah, the women's, absolutely. I, I, I ain't ready to watch the men's until they get to the final four. The, the women's basketball is like the best thing in sports right now. I'm yes, sorry. Sir. Yes, sir. And there's going to be many games tonight, man. The games tonight is going to be punching their ticket to the Sweet 16. So tune in and check it out. Real quick, I got to I gotta uh, announce the countdown continues with Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, which may go down as the most watched event in sports history. Everybody talking about it. Here's what Jake Paul had to say. Well, I want to see how hard he hits, Mike. I, Mike, I, I really want to see, bro. Let's see all the legends, the myths, because you're Iron Mike Tyson, but I have an iron chin. People know that. Like, I, I take shots. So I think people are underestimating that me being able to deal with his power, and that is what something that is going to make it interesting. Like, I can't. I literally can't wait to look across the ring and see him 
and give him a fucking death stare. Okay, okay. If you want to, if you want to sit up there and try to box a tank, if you want to, if you want to box box a, a Afghanistan Ar Iranian tank. <laughs> I never Good wanted luck. to see somebody get knocked out as bad as I want to see Jake Paul get <laughs> Good knocked luck. out. Look, man. I'm talking rock and sock and robot type knockout. Mike Tyson going to make his bowels move. Listen, man, I'm, I know this is the 57-year-old <laughs> version of Mike Tyson, but still. Uh, uh. But the only thing I'm scared of, like, like as, as tough as Mike Tyson is, I just don't want him to hit Mike Tyson the wrong way and he'd be messed up. Nah, yeah, because he's older. Hey man, I, so, Jake Paul, if he does connect, can he fight? Can Jake Paul fight? He's he listen. Is he one of the greatest of all time? No, but he's already he's already did more than what everybody expected him to do in this sport. Right? What, wasn't nobody expecting him to be as good as he is? So, okay. and he packs a punch too. Now, if he is able Ooh. to connect with Mike, I mean, I'm not. I'm just saying, but it's gonna be man, fun to watch, dog. Man, you ever shook Mike Tyson's hand? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> Shake Mike Tyson's hand, man. It's, it's like like grabbing a, a rail on the side of a building. You ever gave him a bro hug? No, he bear hugs you like, man. Man, man that, dude, that dude snatched me so hard, man. <laughs> me turned, too, dog. Turned, me wrapped too. up in his arms like a bitch. I was sucking my thumb, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Drop it like it's hot. 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 Drop it I was sucking my thumb like, hey, right, let me go, dog. Let me go. <laughs> man, when he made bad on me, I had to go see a chiropractor. <laughs> man, I was like, what the hell just happened? Yeah, dog. All right, it's time for the hot spot. What up, Brett? What up, Ricky? Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brett Tat Tat. And this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. In a heartfelt video message, Catherine, Princess of Wales, revealed that she has been diagnosed with cancer. Here's how it all went down. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. Oh, wow. wow. The type of stage cancer was, uh, the type and stage of the cancer was not revealed, you guys. Um, Kate had added that she and Prince William needed time to explain the situation to their children and asked for time, space, and privacy uh, to complete the treatment. The announcement follows rampant speculation about Kate's health and her absence from public view in recent months. Her father-in-law, King Charles, was also recently diagnosed with cancer. And last but not least, Usher sure has a lot to celebrate this year. Uh, a thoroughly lit Super Bowl halftime performance show, uh, a new album, a new wife, and now the anniversary of his biggest album ever, 2004's Confessions. He wrote on Instagram while sharing a compilation of music videos from the album. 20 years ago today, we dropped the iconic Confessions album, which is now 14 times platinum, making it the highest RIAA certified album by the, a male soloist released this century. So congratulations to Usher. All right, y'all, we're going to wrap up you the know, hot spot. Uh, Usher's so popular right now that even in the black churches, people start joining the Usher board. Like, like their <laughs> enrollment went up. Like it's, uh, it's like two Ushers per door now. <laughs> This is Mark Morial, and I serve as president of the National Urban League, and this is the state of black America. The Final Four is coming up as we are immersed in March Madness. But I want to talk to you today a little bit about two issues related to jobs and closing the wealth gap. One discussion that needs to take place in this country is whether college athletes should be paid. That's right. Is college sports more like a business? is participating in college sports for athletes who are also scholars more like a job? Should the billions generated by television and media coverage be shared with the athletes? That's an issue that I'm going to talk to you more on upcoming segments of this state of black America. But I just wanted to pique your interest because it's an important debate. If you look at the March Madness and you look at the ladies, if you will, tournament, what you'll see is Many, many African-American players entertaining us, exciting us, demonstrating considerable economic, considerable talent. Should they be paid? That's a discussion we have to have. Secondly, I'm proud that the National Urban League has expanded its urban tech jobs program, a gain about jobs. 
and 11 cities across the nation, our affiliates, are working on how we help people get into these new technology jobs. We've developed a first-class training program. These curriculums, under the Digital Training Academy and Tech Academy, are beginning to help people understand software training and basic skills, and becomes a model for us to expand this further throughout the nation in other Urban League affiliates. What's the point? The point is, is that the technology revolution, while we use TikTok, we use iPhones, we use Instagram, we also have to be participants in the better paying jobs and in the business opportunity. The National Urban League, the organization I'm proud to lead, is leading the way in preparing and training people for these new jobs. And we are going to do more. That is today's State of Black America. Have a great week. Once again, I'm Mark Morial, and follow me across all social media, on Facebook, on X, on Instagram. Please follow us, and I'll see you next week on the radio.